Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. I got this on Larry's Telegram channel called Tartaria and History Channel. Please check the description to know more about his channel. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Engineers and architects of our remote past would not have placed this glass bowl on top of a building if it were not to protect the presence of a fundamental element for the either earth connection and the consequent generation of electromagnetic energy. Probably with the arrival of the parasites, the element was removed. Or maybe it was just a bulb with magnificent phosphorescent light, as it was at the top of the towers of the old white light cities. Below, the circular columns form a powerful coil circuit in St. Petersburg, the former city of angels. The buildings depicted in the image were built 600 years ago, fully equipped with high technology, self-generating energy from electromagnetic field. What do you think? On September 15, 1896, two locomotives crashed head on 14 miles north of Waco, Texas. The locomotive's boilers exploded on impact, sending debris flying through the air for hundreds of yards, killing at least two spectators and maiming countless others. One man even lost an eye to a flying bolt, but no one ran from the calamity. In fact, after the crash, thousands of bystanders ran toward the destroyed locomotives, hoping to claim a piece of the wreckage. That's because the 40,000 or so people scattered along the tracks that September day knew the locomotives were going to crash and had paid to be there. From 1896 until the 1930s, stage train wrecks were popular at fairs and festivals across the U.S. Joe Connolly staged more than 70 wrecks and destroyed at least 146 locomotives between 1896 and 1932. Connolly, originally from Iowa, began to crisscross the country putting on wrecks from Boston to Los Angeles, Tampa to Salt Lake City. By the 1930s, stage train wrecks were starting to lose their popularity because wrecking otherwise useful locomotives was seen as wasteful at the height of the Great Depression. Very odd how these beautiful locomotives were so easily destroyed, the people of the time seemed to be quite ignorant to it all, and especially during a depression. Out with the old and make way for the new, only it looks like we took a step back instead of forward with what we have today. You decide. Antigia Temples Antigia Temples in Gozo are said to be older than the pyramids in Egypt and date back to between 3600 and 3200 BCE and possibly even earlier. These megalithic temples are considered to be the second oldest structure in the world. The temples are actually two temples built next to each other, north and south, and each have five semicircular apses with several altars. According to the local legend, the temples were built overnight by a giant woman with a baby at her breast. She ate a meal of only broad beans, and then carried huge blocks of stone to build the walls of the structure. Behind the simplicity of the legend lies its important point, the lingering in the collective memory of the worship of a feminine creatrix. Emblematically, a woman with a baby at her breast was not a helpless traveler looking for shelter, but a giantess who built a temple overnight. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you.
Plato's Lost Island of Atlantis Found Plato's cautionary tale was based on a real setting. Recently, a four-year study that included a thorough analysis of Plato's work established that serious errors by early translators allowed for the mixed messages in the translated document. The recent study not only decisively placed Atlantis in the Mediterranean Sea, but it concluded with the discover and identification of a submerged prehistoric island that in every way matches Plato's Atlantis. The study shows that around 9600 BC, when according to Plato Atlantis was above water, the modern Cyclades Islands were connected by the Cyclades Plateau, a flat terrain, now 400 feet below sea level, that formed the body of a huge island. When this prehistoric island is compared to Plato's Atlantis, it immediately becomes evident that this must have been the land Plato was talking about. What do you think? The Pineal Glandula The pineal gland is one of the greatest secrets hidden from us. The secret is not that the gland exists, the secret is its function. Medical students are told it's a crooked organ, but it's not. The pineal gland is our third eye, it is the organ through which we dream and imagine, and once it is activated, it is also the organ that connects us to other dimensions of reality, that is, it allows us to see beings of other dimensions besides allow us to make astral journeys, or leave our physical body to travel with our ethereal body, develop psychic skills such as clairvoyance or telepathy, and even the possibility of time travel. What do you think? These are pictures of the magnificent Tartarian architecture of the Victoria Terminus, now called CSMT, railway station in Mumbai, India. Who would build a railway station this grand? The statue on top is wearing Roman robes, I guess, and cannot be of Queen Victoria. Some areas inside the station look awesome, like a palace. And there are intricate carvings everywhere. In one of the carvings above, the stone appears to be melting. Amazing. Through the arch of one of the pillars of this station building, you can see another amazing piece of architecture, the Municipal Corporation Building. Who would want to build a government office this grand? Wikipedia slaps on the name of an architect without any details how it was constructed. Obviously, this is the work of a great race which predates ours. What do you think? What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.